This video is for ELEC 1510 Logic Design. This is Lecture 17, Part 2, on State Machine Circuit Design, this time using T flip-flops, and this information is from the textbook section 5.8. Let's review how a T flip-flop works. A T flip-flop has a single input, T. When the T input is a zero, there is no change produced at the output. The output Q retains its previous state. When the input T is a 1, the output Q changes state. It toggles. So it'll move from a 0 to a 1 or a 1 to a 0. Now, in a more convenient form that we can use in state machine design, we can rewrite that characteristic this way. If Q moves from 0 to 0, T has to be a 0. If Q moves from either 0 to 1 or 1 to 0, T has to be a 1 to toggle the output. And if Q stays 1, T has to be a 0. So let me design a state machine using a T flip-flop for my extremely simple state diagram that has a single bit representing the state. I call that state A. And there's only a single input X. So I've used this example to design a state machine using D and JK flip-flops already. What we need for this table is the T input as a function of the current state moving to the next state. When the input is a zero, the current state moves from zero to zero, meaning it doesn't toggle, so T is a zero. When the current state is a one and the input is a zero, we move to a next state of zero, so the output toggles, meaning T has to be a one. When the input is a one and the current state is a zero, we move to a next state of one. Again, it toggles, so T has to be a one. And for the last row, T again toggles, which means that the expression for T is X or A. All right, so now we can design our state machine using the T flip-flop. We have a single flip-flop in this example. It's got a clock on its clock input, a single input T, and an output Q. The output represents the state A. And as we derived in the previous slide, the input to T has to be A or X, where X is the input. And so there is that same very simple state machine designed using a T flip-flop. All right, let's now design the more complicated state machine using T flip-flops. This is the one that has two flip-flops in it because it has four states. It still only has a single input X though. So we need two T inputs, T sub A and T sub B for the state variables A and B. I've filled in the uh, next state columns for each combination of the current state and input variables. So what we have to do to fill in T sub A and T sub B columns is just look at the transition from current A to next A and current B to next B. So in the first row, a goes from 0 to 0, here to here. That is not a toggle, so T sub A is a 0. B goes from 0 to 1. That is a toggle, so T sub B in that row is a 1. In the next row, A and B both go from 0 to 0. Neither of them toggle, so they are both zeros. In the third row, A goes from a 0 to a 1. That is a toggle. B goes from 1 to 1. That's not a toggle. Fourth row, A goes from 0 to 1, that is a toggle. B goes from 1 to 0, that is also a toggle. So by now you can probably recognize the pattern and I can just fill in the rest of the rows. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 0, 0. So now we need to derive 
expressions using k maps for t sub a and t sub b. All right, so the k maps for t sub a and t sub b look like this. So we can circle bubbles to make SOP expressions for t sub a we will get these two bubbles. So T sub A is equal to B X prime or A prime B. And T sub B is going to be equal to B prime X prime or B X. So now let's draw the state machine. I need a lot of room for my front end circuitry over on the left, so I'm going to draw the flip flops over here. I have the two clock inputs. I have T sub A and T sub B. And the outputs from each of these are A and B respectively. The input T sub A was given by the function B X prime or A prime B. So I need an OR gate and two AND gates. In the first AND gate I have B X prime. So I'll have my input X over here and I'll draw an inverter there for x prime. And then the second input is b. So I'll draw an offshoot of b all the way up here. So there's b x prime and now I need a prime b. So I'll draw, well first of all I'll connect b in there and then a will have an offshoot into an inverter for A prime and there I have A prime B. Now for the T sub B input I also need an OR gate and two AND gates. In the first AND gate I need B prime X prime so I had an offshoot of B but no B prime yet so I'll draw an offshoot of B with an inverter for B prime and then I need X prime as well I had that up here so I'll just draw an offshoot of that with a lot of jumpers so there's B prime X prime and then B X finally so here's B and then I need X which was here and there's my completed circuit that one looks pretty complicated as you can see the JK flip-flop implementation of that circuit was much simpler than the T flip-flop implementation T flip-flops only have a single input but for certain types of circuits the front end circuitry is really complicated T flip-flops tend to work really well for certain types of state machines where we have a lot of toggling at the outputs so that the inputs are usually just ones. We'll talk about those types of circuits later which are called counters.